right here is my brand new Skeeter FXR 21 bass boat. Hold up. There we go. That's it. Now, is this boat the absolute fastest one on the market? Probably not. But this bass boat right here is my sixth boat with Skeeter. It has been a long, amazing partnership together. I cannot thank this company enough, Skeeter and Yamaha. They believe wholeheartedly in what I do on social media, helping you guys catch more fish, and they help me get around the country and fish some awesome bodies of water. And I get to run a new boat every year, which is pretty stinking awesome. Now, before we get on the water and do a quick speed test to see how fast this sucker is, I wanna break down a few brand new features on the 2024 FXR. The first of which, in my opinion, the most practical being the redesign of the tires and the rims on your FXR trailer. In the past, they've been awesome, they're flashy, they're cool, but they are very thin tires and the rims scratch super easily because they're so thin. So any curb you get the boat near, it would scratch. Skeeter listened to the consumer's needs and they put on a bigger tire as well as a smaller rim that sits more inside the tire. That way this thing has a smoother ride and hopefully won't scratch as easily. The next change being the bulking up of the standard step and now a bar handle that comes on each each Skeeter built trailer. So this thing is crazy sturdy. I know usually you have to go aftermarket to get a really sturdy step and handle, but now Skeeter, again, listen to the consumers and they put a better one on the boat stock. So when you're getting into your boat on the water in the garage, I mean like a much bigger person can bounce on this thing than ever before. The next few changes are occurring all in the main storage compartments up here on the front deck. So in the center, we have our tackle one and the, I keep all my rods here on the port side. And what changed was from a mega rod to which could, again, a tube about this big could fit 30 to 40 rods, again, more than enough. And now they've gotten totally rid of the mega rod tube. The rod locker on this side just has one big hole, one fiberglass hole that's soft on the edges, and then it's carpeted all the way up to the nose of the boat. That way you can put, I mean, you could probably fit like 60 rods in here. Now here in the middle, Skeeter has updated their tackle storage to have 16 available slots for your tackle boxes. That is by far more than enough but not for me, you'll see why here in a second. In these two compartments here, not much change besides again, the bigger hole right here and inside the day box, we now have access to a, uh, a 45 degree slant. That way you can have your network cables, your, your black box for live scope, everything there that's in a nice waterproof area that is not uh, vertical up and down. I think the, uh, the, the waves hitting a boat can definitely cause these screws to get loose on a black box. So they've put it at a 45 degree angle because as we have more and more technology, Skeeter is keeping up with the trends and they wanna have a good place for our tech to be that's safe and sound. Now, like I said, this boat is not fully rigged and ready to go out and catch fish. It needs a few customizations with stop number one being in Longview, Texas at Amps Outdoors. So here in this beautiful shop in Longview, Amp Marine creates awesome uh, boat tackle storage solutions that I don't think many other people are doing and that's why I, I partner with them. They're awesome friends of mine. Now what Amp Marine does is takes eighth inch ABS plastic, they laser cut it, they hand bend it, and they make storage and tackle solutions for your fishing boat and your garage and your man cave, whatever you need. And they make my tackle not only lighter in the boat because the plastic material they use is lighter than what most boat manufacturers use, but they also make it a lot more practical. And every year Amped Marine is renovating with of course the new designs and boat brands to make sure they have the stuff that fits for your boat. So you can buy them online. I will have them linked down below. But let's talk about what tackle solutions I put in my boat. In the center hatch of my FXR, I keep Amped Marine's uh, Plano tray in the middle that of course, you know, takes up the entire space, has 16 slots for Plano tackle boxes, and then the side tray organizers, and that can keep hooks, soft plastics, JJ's Magic, dip pens, all that kind of stuff can be on the sides. And it really maximizes the space that I can keep tackle uh, and soft plastics in that I think not a whole lot of boats can have. And alongside of that, I have two hanging trays that can keep, again, soft plastics, hooks, terminal tackle, whatever I want. That way I am fully rigged in the, in the center of the boat. I hardly ever have to reach in any other compartments to get all the tackle I need for a day's fishing. The next customization item I have is the understep drawer that they make for Skeeter boats. So uh, in the FXR and the ZXR, I believe as well. Yeah, ZXR, they both have basically useless space underneath there. And so Amp Marine has taken advantage of that by putting a drawer. And inside of that, I keep extra sunglasses, my rags to wipe down the graphs and sunglasses, sunscreen, hooks, pliers, whatever I want, whatever you want, you can keep in that spare drawer. So again, just maximizing space is what Amp is all about. So if you have a Skeeter, Phoenix, Ranger, Vexus, Nitro, Camus, Express, Avid, Falcon, Basscat, Bullet, Triton, Blazer, Content, Contender, What's a content? G3, Stratus, Ka or Kayak. 
if you, if you got a kayak or they have universal mounts as well. And if you've got a, a Gator Tracks, bring it here to Longview and they can measure and custom make stuff here in the shop for your boat. I don't know why I picked out Gator Tracks. I just thought about Gator Tracks. <laughs> I feel like Keith Poche probably needs some tackle organization in his life. Oh my God! Hate me. Please be the one. But I'm working with Gator Tracks. Oh, you really? Yeah. Right, right now. Whatever you've got, they have it or they can make it. So like I said, I will have Amphorine and their stuff linked in the video description. But now that we have the tackle organization, it's time we head to one of my favorite places on earth, and that is the Bass Tank in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's the best noise ever. Oh, sorry. This is also the biggest screen ever. Welcome to the Bass Tank. Not only is the Bass Tank the official marine retailer of Tyler's Real Fishing, I get all of my electronics here, and they sell online Hummingbird, Lowrance, and Garmin, all three major brands, and of course all the accessories that go along with those, but they also install my electronics. As you can see from the B-roll shots there, the installs they do are professional, they are clean, and here in a few minutes this boat will be out the door on the way to the lake for the first time putting this boat in the water to break in the engine and of course do a little bit of a speed test. But first we got to get ourselves away from this giant wall of graphs right here and show you guys what I think are the coolest new additions to any bass boat ever, which makes this Skeeter my favorite one to date. Starting here in the back of the boat with the always dependable power pole 10 foot blades and the Yamaha SHO 250. And they are, they're, again, they're two dependable products that I always have here on a boat. Here in the battery compartment, I have my batteries, of course, that run, you, you still can't see me. Lovely, there we go. So I've got my Pro Guide lithium batteries. I've ran Pro Guides for a few years now. They are not only some of the most dependable batteries out there, again, depending Dependability I, I, I rely on here in my job. They are good price with my discount code TRF, save you 10% on your lithium and AGM batteries. But what really sets ProGuide apart is that they are one of the longest standing battery companies out there. They have been putting batteries in boats and in the hands of anglers for I think over like 35, 40 years, something like that, a lot longer than other battery companies. So you can actually trust they know what they're talking about and they can back up the warranties they are providing. And the exact battery setup I'm running this year is a little more beefed up than previous years. I've got two of the 36 VM50 batteries uh, for my trolling motors. Of course, those are set up in parallel. And then to run all of my accessories, my power poles, my starting engine, that is on two of the ProGuide starting lithium batteries for 12 volts. We'll run my power poles, all my electronics, my, my cranking for the battery. Uh, everything should be good to go on these two batteries. And to top it all off, we have the power pole charge that keeps all my batteries topped off, has all the cool features y'all have come to know and love. And I just realized how awkward the shot is. And for the past few years, I have ran just Garmin electronics on my boats. I've been super pleased with them. They've been fantastic. But I know that there's a few things that especially Hummingbird has uh, when it comes to their mapping and their, their side scan and sonar that Garmin just doesn't quite have yet. It's still good. It's still fantastic. But I wanted to run the best of the best on my boat this year, which you'll see here in a second. You already saw the screen. And so for the Bass Tank Academy, it's a, a, an online course that we're doing here at the Bass Tank, teaching you guys like the super intricate details about your electronics. They want to be running Hummingbird as well. And I also wanted to run Hummingbird. So I'm going to be learning these things inside and out. You can expect a whole new level of electronics teaching here on this channel, as well as on the Bass Tank Academy. I will leave the link to sign up for the Academy down in the video description. Again, it's got so many instructional videos already, including, I think it's like a $2,000 uh, value of a full boat install. So if you don't want to bring your boat here to the Bass Tank in Tulsa, you want to install your graphs in a professional way at home. They have filmed the entire process, all the best practices from people who know what they're doing on how to install your own graphs in your boat. So again, that's why I'm running both Garmin and Hummingbird here at the console. But what has really changed about the boat and what is extra special is up front. I'm so jacked up. This thing is, this is the coolest thing. This, this shot doesn't even show it. Right here in front of me, I have two graphs. One of them here is the Hummingbird Helix 10. I've got it up front for my 360 transducer, but the graph next to it, and I, and I have a wide shot right now for perspective, shows you how truly large this live scope unit is. This is the NBT, they call it the battleship. It's the big screen. It is 22 inches of high definition, zero pixel loss goodness to display your live scope and anything else that is on the Garmin unit in the back. So the cool thing about this, this system is that the NBT unit also for sale here at the Bass Tank for those of y'all who wanna check it out. 
As far as the 22 inch screen goes, it is crazy strong. Even in big waves, I am not worried about a 17 pound fish finder. Again, full touchscreen capabilities and it just mirrors what is back there on that unit. And they have both a 16 or a 17 and a 22 inch. And it's actually a cheaper way to go if you wanna have two uh, Garmin units to have one of the GPS maps that goes to an NBT. And again, here at the Vast Tank, they can fully install it for you. I just, I gotta show y'all up close. This thing is awesome. That is absolutely ginormous and compared to a Helix 10, definitely quite a shift. Now we've got the uh, the 360 transducer right there. I'm gonna be putting it on my power pull move, running the move again for 2024. I love the trolling motor, super uh, super quiet, super strong. And of course the Garmin LiveScope 34 transducer as well as Hummingbird, I think that's a side scan transducer. So again, for the Academy, we are running everything that you could possibly have in your boat, whether you're one of my Minnesota viewers that loves Hummingbirds or you're down south here and you're more of a Garmin guy. We've got both of them here on the boat installed professionally by the guys here at the Bass Tank. Well, folks, that's gonna do it for our time here at the Bass Tank. I am more excited than usual. There's nothing like the feeling of getting it on the water for the very first time. I'm sure many of you guys out there can associate getting your first boat or first boat to you and, uh, and put it on the water, catch some fish. And so let's uh, ski down a lot of here. Leaving the Bass Tank here in Tulsa and getting on the water. Gotta make sure the engine works. Put it in reverse, Terry! Throttle seems extra throttly this year. Now, first things first, before we can go fast, I gotta put my bibs on, because it's just a wee bit cold. It's always funny to me when you don't wear your life jacket, you know, that you take that out of context. What I meant to say is that I think it's funny when you don't wear your life jacket, you know, for a few months, and then you put winter clothes on, and all of a sudden, it doesn't fit anymore. So I feel like I've gotten fat, but it's really just that I'm wearing more clothes. Boy, are you fat. Fat. Now every year I have to break in the engine on the boat. That means that I have to put a few hours on it before I can uh, safely run it at full speed. So we're gonna put probably three hours on it, then do our speed test. But I forget every year how to actually break in my engine. So it's a good thing I've made a video for Skeeter Boats called Skeeter School on how to break in an engine. So I'm gonna watch my own video right now. Your first hour of operation is going to be nothing over 2,000 RPM. Second hour, which is just as simple as the first, but just enough throttle to keep that boat on plane and nothing more. Do not operate at full throttle for more than five minutes, but that is it. Okay, super simple. So first hour, 1,000 RPM. Second hour, just barely get it on plane. And the next eight hours, baby, wide open with limits. And one thing I'm gonna do, especially as I put the first hour on, is I'm gonna really learn some settings, or at least what I can on my Hummingbird unit. If I'm gonna make instructional content for the Bass Tank Academy, I have to be an expert at this unit. So I've got, where are we at? 0.3 engine hours. I've got 0.7 hours of just basically idling around to learn a few settings. So let's kind of vary RPMs and start to learn. I'm gonna get my dang throw cushion and put it behind my back for support. There we go. I feel like I'm hunchback over here. And now I can idle properly and actually touch my screen and not feel like I'm... I have been stuck at 0 0.9 hours for the longest time. Come on now. Hey, one hour, there we go. We're gonna grab the second camera, put it up, and we'll see you guys at the end of hour number two. That brings us to the moment you came to this video for, and that is we have reached two hours. I can finally do a full speed test here on my brand new 2024 fully rigged out FXR. This is definitely the most electronics I've ever had on a boat. It's the most weight I've had in a boat. Besides the gas tank, it could have another half tank of gas in it. But besides that, tackles in it, rods are in it, soft plastics are in it, all my terminal tackle. I say it's time we crank the engine up, put it in gear, put this camera away, and see how fast she can scoot. First run here, gonna kinda of take it slow a little bit, probably not gas it too much. Just start to really understand how this boat drives. It's cold, it's cold. run here was 71 and a half it started getting a little squirrely at times so I kind of let off uh, I'll let off the throttle there but 
I was impressed, especially with the acceleration with how much stuff I have in this boat. It went a whole lot faster, at least from the gate, than I thought it would. Uh, but that was downwind. So again, I'm expecting this boat to be slightly slower than previous years and it's fully loaded. So you know what, 71 fully loaded, that's stinking awesome. It's really challenging getting good audio going 70 miles an hour. Test two, upwind. Good hole shot. 50. Well, I guess Hummingbird graph covers can't go that fast. So this is probably the fastest FXR I've had yet. That was, that was a different feeling experience. That felt more like a Bass Cat or a Phoenix than it did a Skeeter, but uh, I like it. And the reason I say that is because it feels like I have to actually drive the boat in bass fishing terms, kind of be in more control uh, than I have in previous years Skeeter models. And then as soon as I let the throttle off uh, going upwind just now, I almost felt the boat like drop from you know sitting high up on the engine on, on, on the, this boat may be a little bit more dangerous per se to drive at high speeds but that also means you can drive it at high speeds previous skeeters fully maxed out i'm going like 68 69 maybe but this one i'm going 71 and a half and that's my first try i can probably get even more speed out of this thing if i really learn to drive it and i will throughout the year but will i today probably not although i gotta try one more time <laughs> 